My credit score is an 847, only three points away from a perfect score. And I'm going to give you a one week plan to get perfect credit yourself. Several people that have watched my videos that are members of my Facebook group have done what I've told them to do and they've improved their scores dramatically in a short period of time. So when you get to the excellent range, you're probably going to be offered the best interest rates and therefore it's going to save you a lot of money in the long run. So let me tell you about the plan. It's a seven day plan and every day I'm going to tell you to do something different. So let's get right into it. I'm Shahida Hill getting you over the hill to home ownership and helping you confidently buy your first home with perfect credit. We are going to start this plan on Saturday. So on Saturday you are going to get a copy of each one of your credit reports. You're going to get your Equifax credit report, your TransUnion, and your Experian. And the website that I'm going to have you go to is annualcreditreport.com. It's the official website authorized by federal law to get your credit reports from. It's absolutely free. There's, they have to give you one copy by law every year. Now, since COVID, they've been giving more copies of your credit report. But in general, they have to give you at least one copy of your credit report every 12 months. So you'll get them from in the same website from Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian. I want you to get them from the website. I want you to print them out. And then I want you to highlight anything negatively reporting on your credit report. Because in order to improve your credit, we need to make sure that we're cleaning up any negative items on that report. So that's all I want you to do on Saturday. I'm starting it on Saturday since you have a little bit extra time. Maybe you're off from work, but you're going to get all three copies of your credit report. Now, they will have the option for you to also buy your credit score. Now, you can do that or stick with me for Sunday because, you know, they may charge you a small fee to get your um, credit score. I'm going to give you some websites that will give you a free credit score. On Sunday, I want you to sign up for free credit monitoring. I like CreditWise myself, but if you're looking for a site that gives you a little bit more um, lender information because lenders are going to use your FICO score, then you may want to use my FICO. I did this video all about the best credit monitoring sites and my FICO won over because it gives you basically what lenders, especially mortgage lenders, are going to be looking at. But I really like CreditWise. Also, if you already have credit cards, most of the major credit cards are going to give you a free score every month. So I want you to spend Sunday making sure you have some type of credit monitoring. So for example, you can do credit wise and that's with TransUnion. They'll give you a TransUnion score, but they'll also monitor what's going on with your credit for free. And then you can go to some of your credit cards and say, okay, are they monitoring my score as well? You want to make sure you're signed up for some type of credit monitoring. And that's all I want you to do on Sunday. For the remaining five days of the week, we are going to tackle what makes up your credit score. On Monday and Tuesday, we're going to go over the most important component. On Wednesday and Thursday, we're going to go over the second most important component. And then on Friday, we're going to go over the last three. All right, so let's get started with Monday. Today, we're going to focus on what makes up 35% of your score, and that's payment history, okay? Now, It's the most important that you pay your bills on time. 30 day late and 60 day late are killing your credit score. You have to be very, very mindful because this is the highest ranking component, payment history. When you pay things late or you you don't pay at all, it, it does a major, major impact to your credit score. So things like foreclosure, 
things like repossessions. Um, again, 30 day late, 60 day late, 90, 120. When you're not paying your bills or you're paying late, that shows creditors that you're not a good credit risk and it takes a major hit to your credit score. So on Monday, what I want you to do is look at any late payments. So any late payments that are on your credit report, I want you to look at them. One, I want you to evaluate if it's accurate. So is the late payment accurate or the non-payment, is it accurate? If you decide that it's not accurate, like you really paid on time or you really paid that bill, you're going to dispute that item on your credit report. In the description of this video, I have a link to how you do a dispute. Now they will give you an option to do a dispute online. I don't want you to do the online dispute. I want you to do the dispute in writing. When you do it in writing, you typically have more chances to dispute it versus when you do the online dispute, you only have, generally speaking, one chance to dispute it. Now, once you dispute the debt, they have 30 days to respond to your dispute. If they don't respond, then it's automatically taken off of your credit report. If they do respond validating the debt, then you it will remain on your credit report. But the first thing I want you to do is check. There's a lot of um, credit reports that are not accurate. So you want to look at your credit report and see if any of those late payments, non-payments are inaccurate. And the good news is, even if you had a foreclosure, it only takes about two to three years to rebuild your credit. And that's one of the worst things you can do is not pay for your house, right? So it doesn't take much or many years for you to regain um, your credit. So you're going to do that first. The second thing, if they're accurate, so if some of these late payments are accurate, like you really didn't pay, you paid late. If you're caught up on that account, for example, say you had a car loan and you maybe were late on two payments, maybe you forgot or you had a job loss, something along those lines, you're going to ask for a goodwill deletion on those accounts or on those um, credit, those hits on your credit. So you paid late and it was legitimate. However, now that you've regained employment or you know it was just a mistake, now you've been paying on time. Now I want you to reach out to that creditor. You can do this in writing as well and ask for a goodwill deletion. Basically saying, you know, I had some difficulty and you could say what, what the problem was, but now you're back and you're caught up on your payments and you would like to, for them basically to remove the late payment from your credit report. I'm also going to include a link that tells you how to write a goodwill letter for those accurate late payments. Now let's move on to Tuesday. I want you to never, ever pay bills late again. So any bills that you can set up on auto pay, I want you to take today to do that. Many times, it's not that you don't have the money, it's that you're not organized or maybe you got busy and you forgot to pay. You can set up your bills for auto pay. You can set up your credit card bills to just make the minimum payment. You don't have to tell them to pay a lot. Then you can decide how much you want to pay each month, but then you will never pay late because all of your auto payments are set up. If you don't trust auto payments or if you're not comfortable with that, then you really need to set a time two times a month to make sure that like the beginning of the month, you pay any bills that are due between the 1st and the 15th. And in the middle of the month, you're going to pay any bills that are due between the 15th and the last day of the month, whether that's the, you know, the 30th, 31st, just the last day of the month. So you want to make sure that you're never going to pay your bills late again. So if you've been in the process of kind of just being disorganized with your payments, you want to set Tuesday aside to make sure that you're set up not to pay those bills late ever again. Okay, now we've gotten the most important component out of the way on Monday and Tuesday. That's 35% of your score payment history. Now we're going to move on to the second most important component. It. That is available credit. That is 30% of your score. 
So today, Wednesday, I want you to calculate how much of your available credit you are using. And I'm gonna use $10,000 as an example. So if you look at all of your credit limits across your credit cards and you add them together and it's $10,000. So I want you to look at all your credit cards to say, okay, how much available credit do I have? If those balances were zero, like if one credit limit is you know, $5,000, the other credit limit is $6,000, whatever it is for you, I want you to calculate how much available credit that your credit limits and add those all together. And then your balances. So for I'm gonna use 10,000 as an easy example. So if you have $10,000 um, in available credit across your credit cards, but you've charged up, like you use $7,000, okay? You actually only have now $3,000 in available credit, meaning you're using 70% of your available credit. That is not good. It's basically showing a lender or the credit reporting, um, the credit scoring model that you need your credit a lot. Like you need a lot of the available credit that you have. The higher this percentage is, the lower your credit score will likely be. So you wanna see what is your percentage? Like how much of your credit are you using? And you want to make your goal to get this percentage lower than 50%. So if you're above 50%, your first goal is to get your credit down to at least 50%. You wanna have 50% or more of available credit. So if you have a $10,000 balance across your cards, you want to make sure that you are less than 5,000, like you're using less than 50%. Your next goal is going to get, to get down to 30%, okay? You wanna get, $3,000 or less, that those two, um, paying it off 50%, then paying it down past 30% will give you jumps in your credit score, okay? Because you, now you have more available credit. And then you'll get another jump at 10% or lower. If you are using um, 10% or less of your available credit, your credit score will increase again. So that will be in our $10,000 example. That would be meaning you're using less than $1,000 of all of your credit. Okay, so you wanna get it beneath 50%. Then your next goal is beneath 30%. Then, um, and your last goal is beneath 10%. So you're going to spend Wednesday figuring out where you are. How much of your available credit are you using? And then make a plan to say, okay, how can I you know, pay down this debt? How long will it take me? And you're definitely not going to charge anything additional, okay? You're gonna make a plan that you're not going to use your credit cards to charge anything additional until you're beneath that 10% or not at all, okay? Or if you get to the point where you charge something, you pay it off. Now it's Thursday, we're gonna stick with available credit. Now one thing that you can do that can help you reach your goal earlier is to call your credit card companies and ask them to increase your limit. So Wednesday, you figured out, okay, where you needed to be, how much you need to pay off. But one thing that can help you reach your goal faster is for each of the credit cards to increase your credit limit, therefore giving you more available credit. So this is one option you could use. I would call every single credit card. Sometimes they will allow you to do this online and, and request a credit line increase. So say you had a $5,000 balance, maybe you wanna move it to $6,000 or $7,000. So you wanna try to see if they would give you a, and not every credit card is going to do it, but if they can increase your, um, your credit line, then you would have more money. Like you would have more available credit and you could reach that 50%, that 30% and that 10% goal earlier. So that's all I want you to do on Thursday is figure out if you can increase your credit limits on your credit cards. I don't want you to use that, that extra credit. It's just to help you um, reach those 50%, 30% and 10% goals faster. You made it to the end of the week 
and it's Friday. And we're gonna tackle those last three components of the credit score. Now you've done all of the hard work Monday through Thursday. That was 65% of what makes up your credit score. So now we're just gonna spend Friday trying to figure out if we can do anything with those last three components. Now, 15% is your length of credit. So just how long have you had credit or how, how long have you established credit? Now, this is, could be difficult if you're really young. So say that you're you know, young, you're in your 20s, maybe you got your first credit card maybe a year ago, then you won't have a, a long credit length. So you can't just, I can't just make you older to have credit longer. But one thing you could do is have someone with a longer credit history add you as an authorized user on their account. Now, I would say that not only will their good credit perhaps help you, but if they don't pay their bills, that could harm you. So I really only recommend adding an authorized user or having yourself added as an authorized user to somebody you really trust or just like your spouse. I don't know if I would go outside of that very much, but if you know somebody has really strong credit, they're willing to um, add you on as an authorized user, that could help with your length of credit because they would pretty much um, give you some of that credit length for whatever card they're adding you to. Number 10 is credit mix, the kinds of credit that you have. There are two primary types of credit. One is installment debt, and basically those are things like student loans, car loans, mortgages. Basically, you've, you've um, borrowed a lump sum of money and then you're paying it back through like regular payments. That's installment debt. And for this credit scoring model, they like to see installment debt and then revolving debt. Revolving debt is more credit cards where if you, you know, you pay your balance and then you get to use that money again and again. Now, I don't recommend that you just open credit accounts to open credit accounts. The only thing is if you don't have any credit, no established credit, then you could open a secured card to establish some kind of credit. And basically you're just putting your own money on that card and then you're charging it and paying it back, charging it, and paying it back. And that will allow you to um, build a, or begin to build a credit history. But I don't recommend, if you don't feel like you have enough like of a credit mix, I don't recommend that you just go ahead and start opening accounts because that will hurt your credit inquiries, which is the last 10%. So the last 10% are inquiries on your credit. When you've applied to credit or if somebody's checked your credit, right? So those things will hurt your credit. So I don't, unless there's an inaccuracy, like you didn't apply for credit or you didn't authorize someone to check your credit, then you can dispute those. So if you feel like that's inaccurate on your credit report, you can dispute it and get those removed. But if they are accurate inquiries, just leave them alone. They, it's only 10% of your score. I would really focus on the other things that you can control. And then little by little, those credit inquiries will fall off or they won't count as much in general on your credit score. So I hope this was helpful and kind of gives you a plan for the a plan for the week. I want you also, when you're going through to try to fix some of the, the things that are negatively reporting on your credit report, I want you to focus on the newest things first. The older things are, the less they matter. And everything by law will come off of your credit after seven years for the most part. So you wanna make sure that you're really focusing on the items on your credit report that are hurting your credit the most. So things you've done in the last year, Focus on those first, then go ahead to year two and then focus on those. But you should see, if you kind of clean up what's happened in the last 12 months, you should see some credit increases and um, your credit improve. And then you can see if it's necessary to go to, to year two to try to clean up those things. But you wanna try to focus first on what's most recent reporting negatively on your credit. And I have an entire credit playlist if you want to work on your credit even more. And then I have this video, again, Again, that will tell you the best credit monitoring sites. And if you are married and you wanna try to improve your spouse's credit, then I have some tips for you here. So please watch those videos next. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe to my channel.